Hi guys, it's David, the Humble Trekker channel. How are you doing today? In this video, I'm going to be talking bollocks. This is a bollock dagger. This is a replica of a mid 16th century bollock dagger that was found in the wreck of the Mary Rose. Now, if you don't know, the Mary Rose was a ship, it was uh, King Henry VIII's flagship, and that sunk in the, uh, the mid 16th century in the Solent, which is the stretch of water between Portsmouth and the Isle of Wight. So it was within sight of the, uh, the shore, and King Henry VIII was actually standing there on the shore watching the battle against the French when his flagship tipped over and went down to the bottom with the loss of uh, a great deal of lives because they had anti-boarding netting on the ship so that the French folks couldn't jump on board and give them uh, How's your father? Consequently, when it sunk, the British, or the English, as they were, no, they weren't British back then, uh, couldn't get off the ship, so a lot of them went down with the ship. They think the reason it sunk was that the, uh, it was too low in the water and they had the gun ports open and it, it canted over and the water rushed in and it went down to the bottom. And it was, it was on the bottom of the Solent for several hundred years. Uh, until the 1970s when it was discovered by some uh, underwater maritime archaeologists and they spent um, a long time, about 10 years, digging, digging through it and bringing bits and pieces up and eventually they brought up the whole, the remains of the hull, it was about half a hull left. It's, it sunk on its side into the, uh, the bottom of the, the Solent, into the mud there and the bit that was in the mud, the one half of the ship, was quite well preserved. And when they brought it up, they brought up a huge amount of artifacts. One of the artifacts they brought up, or some artifacts they brought up, were bollock daggers like this. They also brought up uh, war bows, like over 200 pound war bows. And when you go to the, if you go to the museum, I do recommend going to the museum, you see them and they're thick like that. You couldn't imagine that a human, that it's actually a, a bow as we know it today, where you think of these slim kind of things, but the bow is like this thick and it's like a, it's like an oversized broom handle. You can imagine the, the power in that bow and the strength of the men that pulled them. After decades of training, they were strong enough to pull a 200 pound war bow. Fantastic. Anyway, where I'm going with this intro is that I come from Portsmouth. And when we were at school in the early 80s, it was 80, it must have been 80 or 81, maybe 79. They brought the ship up and uh, we got time off school to watch them bringing the ship up on the TV and it was always on the TV. It was a really, really big deal when they brought up this Mary Rose wreck. So I've always had an affinity for the Mary Rose. I've always been fascinated by all the artifacts they found there and going to the museum. And I was watching Todd Cutler. He's got a YouTube video. I mean, he's got a YouTube channel and Todd is, I don't know him. I just watch his videos and look at his website. So. He is like, as far as I know, he's like one of the world's leading makers of um, historical weapons and not just weapons but historical engineering so he makes swords he makes crossbows he makes regular bows he even makes like big roman ballistas and i get the impression from watching his videos that he works in in tv and films and the discovery channel and stuff like that so when they want like a big roman ballista or a big roman um crossbow built they go to him and he builds it for them and i was watching one of his videos last week and he goes through the history of bollock daggers now a bollock dagger it's called a bollock dagger because it looks like two balls and a cock so it's like a, a bollock dagger that's what it, i don't know they liked daggers handles that looked like a ball and cock back in the day medieval days uh, and he was doing a video he's going to run through from like the 13th century to the 16th century or something like that because these bollock daggers they evolved into the, the Scottish dirk uh, knife and he showed this one he said this is a Mary Rose dagger and I was like pang I gotta have that one so I hit the, uh, the purchase button on his website and it came all the way over to Sweden so I thought I'd give it a little review Todd does all this handmade in the UK um, and he makes it in the style of how it would have been made by a craftsman back in the medieval times or whenever the time period is they were made. So they're not made to modern day eyes 
how we like to look at things. They're made in a style how they would have appreciated it back in the day. So, for example, the, I don't know what you'd call this, the carving or the marking on this red sheath that he has hand sewn. This isn't exactly symmetrical here, this kind of fire or, um, what's it, I don't know how you describe it, but this pattern here, it's not symmetrical. And because back in the day, in the medieval times, things weren't symmetrical. Everything was hand done, so very few things were symmetrical. So they didn't have this built-in concept of everything had to be symmetrical to be attractive. So it's finished to the standard as if it was made in a medieval workshop, not on modern day um, tools and, and machine and stuff like that. So it's a little bit rough around the edges, but that's because back in medieval times, mid 16th century, things were rough around the edges. That's how things were made. So what we've got here, we have a hardwood handle. The tang is peened at the end with a brass uh, washer finishing it off. We have a brass impact plate here around the, the bottom of the, the handle. I'm gonna stop saying bollocks and ball and cock. I don't wanna upset people. But around the bottom of the, the handle here. And the handle, for modern day thinking, would be considered small. But once you handle it and once you've done some thrusting and some cutting with it, you realise this is the right size. It's, it's not too small, this is the way it should be. Um, and it is sharp, he sends it sharp or you can order, order them unsharpened. It's not sharpened all the way down here, presumably because he sharpens it after he's put the handle on and you can't actually get the, well it would be a bit of a pain to get the sharpening stone down there or wherever he sharpens it. But also it means that you can, if you do want to, you can wrap your finger around it just at the, the point there without cutting your finger. And it's got a needle point. It's oh, it's about it's 12.5 inches in the blade length. I've not measured the handle. There we go. And the sheath is stained red leather, sewn up the back with a bit of cordage here that you would tie it to your belt if you were going to the old medieval tavern back in the day. It's made out of carbon steel, so make sure you keep it oiled because I get the impression this is the type of steel that will rust just by looking at a rain cloud and it's a it's a wet snow's melting day today so i've got plenty of oil on it so this would have been in the medieval times a personal defense weapon and every man's weapon that would carry with him for personal defense and also of course he would probably just use it as an everyday knife so in terms of being a defensive weapon i don't recommend anybody going around with this in the 21st century but if you were back in the mid 16th century and you would say you were going to the uh, local tavern to enjoy a big glass of uh, wasser ale, uh, you would have this in your belt there. Anybody gets in your personal space, you could whip it out. And, you... and the beauty of this is it completely protects your personal zone. It's so long, you can pull it out and you can get into an on-guard position or defensive position like this. And then you've got 12 and a half inches that nobody's going to want to come close to you. And a little fuss like that, bang, 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 you're going to have three inches of cold English steel in someone's uh, never regions. Definitely going to be off-putting. In terms of it just being a knife, uh, you can cut stuff with it. You know, if someone brings out a spit roast, the big feast of King Henry VIII, you can wallop it into your spit roast because in back in the day, you didn't get a knife and fork when you went out for dinner. You had to bring your own knife and fork with you, your own cutlery. So you'd probably carve off a bit here on a spit roast, the old suckling pig there, get a big bit of meat off there. And uh, now Todd is very proud of the fact that all his knives are not just beauties, like this is, you could just hang this on the wall, but they're functioning pieces, so they're really, really tough. So I'm gonna do a bit of experiment and to see how tough this knife is. This is a dead pine sapling. So we're just gonna go cut a to town on it. something really interesting here let me show you this guys I hope the camera is focusing 
on this here you see this red orangey thing this is a slime fungus and these things these are funguses they're like half animal half fungus half plant that makes them three half so they're 150 percent and these things can actually move they are one of nature's absolute marvels it's a fungus and they'll actually move up and down the tree very slowly but it doesn't have a brain or anything like that. it's not an animal it's a fungus incredible it's it it's obviously not an x but so far todd's handiwork is holding up this is a brute of a dagger i'll say the stock it's eight millimeters at its widest point here and you see it's got the correct period distal taper full flat grind resharpened secondary bevel i found another dead pine no introduction needed you can see what i'm doing now what i'm doing here is i see todd stuff on the web um, and I'm just trying to give it some real hard, basically, abuse. Because, you know, back in the day, the medieval dudes, they would have been using their knives. They didn't have a whole gamut of different tools that they could go to, probably. If they needed to, they would have used it. So what I'm doing here is strength testing Todd's work. Because it looks beautiful, it's period correct. But it's strong, too. Will the handle come flying off? So far, look at that, I'll get right at the tip. Just check, do the, smack in there with the tip there. Oh man, I'm loving this knife. Here's an old branch. We'll just do some uh, test cutting on this. There you go. Oh baby, oof. Give it a good bollocking. Now the question that I know is on a lot of people's minds out there is, will it baton? But well, there's only one way to find out. Oh, it's just longer than I thought it's going to be. But, uh... Not exactly a convenient angle. Oh. Let's get something more practical. No, I'm not going to give up. I'm not giving up on this puppy. Well, one thing I do find, because it's, it's virtually symmetrical, it's difficult to know which is the sharp edge and which is the, the off edge. Better be filming. There it is. Straight down the middle. It went straight down the middle. So keep going. Are you interested? It's going through knots. We call that another victory for the Mary Rose Bottle Dagger. It will baton. What is guaranteed, if you're a mid 16th century fellow, with your Bollock Dagger that is a personal defense item, is that sooner or later, you will get it wedged between the ribs of your enemy. And then you need to know, can you put it out? Yes, you can put it out the ribs of your enemy. Now to test balance and tip. This is the combination of gravity and steel in perfect harmony. My work here is complete. 
This is one sturdy old bollock dagger. Not only does it look great, it works like it should. Now, it's not a bushcraft knife. It's not a uh, crafting knife of any sort. It shouldn't be used for cutting down trees and stuff like that. It's not built for that. I was just doing that to test the strength of it. It is a replica of a mid 16th century personal defense dagger. And it looks great. It costs 72 pounds from Todd's website. If you're interested, go and check it out. He's got plenty of other gorgeous stuff there. And I just wanted to give it a good hard run. Not because to see how well built it was. And it is really well built, really strong. I'm absolutely in love with my Mary Rose Bollock dagger. It's gonna go back on the wall now in the man cave. And I'll be sticking to my bushcraft knife, bushcraft dinner. Until the next time guys, take it easy and have a great one.